goodness gracious, today's a very special day because it's not just me on today. We have our very own Tone Master General, the inimitable, the inevitable Quain. Quain? Thank you. Lucy commanded me to use this Posi RP. That's going to be my accent today. Very nice. YouTube, welcome. We have a very special guest today. We're going to con Lang with the one, the only, the Tone Master Quain. Quain, say hello. 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 Hi, YouTube. YouTube. We are so happy to have you here. But I think what we're going to do now is just jump right into the con -langing. We have, lo and behold, a spreadsheet. So off to the side with me. And here we go. All right. So cracking the knuckles, getting limber. All right. What are we going to do? What's our first step, Quain? What are we looking at? Hmm. I don't know. Uh, tones, maybe. All right. Let's <laughs> let's take a little. Let's make our, our little inspiration list here. So inspiration number one, tone. Yeah. Uh, inspiration number two, tone. I think we have to give the first the first three yeah. slots and to tone. Like three, four, five, yeah, whatever. Like yeah. it's just We're just gonna tones. have to yeah. Okay, it wasn't oh. smart enough to do that, but <laughs> well, you know <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. We got tone. Okay, so within the domain, the kingdom of tone. Um, what kind of, it, well, Quain, are all tone systems kind of the same or are there, are there big differences between tone systems? Hmm. There are actually a, a, a lot of differences actually. So, um, yeah, there are simpler tone systems that are complex tone systems. So in general, like the, the number of tones can range from just two high or low to like 12, 15, which is a crazy number. I know. But like is yeah, then that's just the number. Uh, so for the type of tones, you got level tones, which is ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. So like you maintain a whole uh, pitch like throughout the whole syllable, and you have contour tones, which are ah uh, ah uh, ah, uh, like things like that. These are contour tones. So you move through so, different yeah. pitches through the syllable. Yeah, you move through different pitches. So um, it's like typologically is uh, in general uh, much more common to have level tones than contour tones. And to have, when you have contour tones, you must, uh, not must, yeah, <laughs> not everything is a must. Uh, so you uh, mostly have uh, level tones accompanying them. So yeah, uh, so in other words, if you have level tones, you can just have level tones, like most uh, West and so Southern African languages do. Uh, but you can also have contour tones, which um, as most Chinese languages do. So, so, yeah, so would, you, a, would it be fair to say then in general, uh, contour tones imply level tones, but not the other way around? Mm -hmm. Within in general, language? but there are exceptions. For example, my dialect, my infamous dialect, which only has four contour tones, no level tones, which is a V. So yeah. Interesting. So so in general, we, we see this tendency where if a language has contour tones, it also tends to have level tones. Asterisk, mm -hmm. some exceptions may apply. Yeah. Like everything in linguistics, right? Yes. Pretty much. Um, okay, so then what what route do you, what route do you want to take uh, in this queen? Do you want to go down more of the the level tone only route or more of a contour tone conlang? Hmm, I think we can like spice it a little bit up, like with uh, some contour tones, but relatively simple contour tones, if you know what I mean. Okay. So there are contour tones which are just rising and falling, right? So these are the two. Uh, basic type of uh, basic types of contour tones. So ah is the rising one, and ah is the falling one. So everybody just like use your ears and try to distinguish them. Okay. Uh, so ah is rising, and ah is falling. Uh, what what do I mean by they are simpler? Is because um, these are like you start from one place and you just go to another place. That's uh, a simple like contour. You don't right? have to uh, sort of hit yeah. a, a second destination in the middle of your journey from the start to the end. 
Right, but some more complex ones that um, like I will demonstrate now. So uh, like ah, that's a ah, that's a rising falling tone, right? So in that case, you have to basically hit three spots. That's the complex complexity of it, basically. So uh, most, I mean, in general, like most contratones are you only have a starting point and uh, an ending point, right? And that's the your simpler, quote unquote, simpler uh, contour tones. Uh, but yeah, let's not get on this stream. Let's not get into the like way complex stuff. Okay. Let's okay. start with some, yeah, some, um, I would say one rising, one falling is a safe bet plus some level tones. That's the way to go. Okay. So we're looking at something with, let's just say, rising, falling, and some level tones. Great. Um, all right, so the language will obviously have more than just a tone system. We're gonna have to put in a, uh, some consonants and vowels as well. So we'll have, to, we'll have to make some decisions about that. Do you have any strong feelings there, Quain, or, or shall we? Hmm. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, we, we mentioned earlier that uh, you, didn't actually do aspirations, did you? No, I, have, which, I don't think we've done any yeah. aspiration on stream. So aspiration. Which is one of my strong suits because I, one, I love it too. I just, yeah, I love it. So basically. Well, that's that's a good enough reason. Um, yeah. I want to just pay attention to the chat here because we had some questions come in. Um, oh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Kobe O'Brien asks, which language is it that has just four contour tones? So... Oh, uh, Queen, this is okay. your 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 native dialect, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my hometown is called Dalian, uh, Dalian. which, yeah, Dalian. Uh, your your tones are on point. Uh, so it's on the northern, it's on the peninsula on the northern coast of China, basically, and yeah, that's where I'm from, which belongs to a branch of Mandarin called Jiaoliao Mandarin. Uh, you don't have to know that, but yeah, it's a very particular language. Uh, that only has four um, contour tones. So, yeah. All right. And let's see if there are any other questions. Um, oh, yeah, we had a question about pitch accent. I don't know if we want to open that can of worms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another, a whole another door. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, yeah. Why don't we keep pitch accent to the side for now? Because the question of how to define pitch accent is kind of, uh yeah. complicated and actually a bit controversial i would say yeah it's like a like personally it's a spectrum right it's like from from tone to non-tone but yeah we'll get into that later i think yeah i think that we'll have to build up a bit to that um yeah. uh logan uh curiously asks what is going to be our tone bearing unit syllables hmm. mori vowels sonorants yeah let's just Say vowels for now, yeah, okay. just to keep it, yeah. So vowel, tone bearing unit. Yeah, unless we want like some kind of syllabic consonant, which I'm not against, but yeah, let's see. And so if we're going towards a language that's more like the sort of Southeast and East Asian style mm -hmm. tone systems, yeah. would it not make sense to have syllables be our, our tone bearing unit? Oh, you mean if, yeah, that, that depends if you analyze like uh, diphthongs and triphthongs as like glides or vowels. Okay, right? yes, so, right, yeah. that's true. Okay, so, so let's, yeah, let's just say syllables to be like e the easiest, yeah. That will probably solve some yeah, problems some for us problems. later on. Yeah. Um, okay, let's see. Um, we're hearing, yeah, Lucy p mentions uh, pitch accent trauma. Um, <laughs> Logan, um, from before says that pitch accent is a scam. Uh, so you can see what I mean, the, the controversy yeah. of pitch accent. Controversial. Yeah. Um, Sparsh, uh, Jory asks, what would be the difference between syllables bearing tones and vowels bearing tones? I think, um, th this probably came in before, uh, Quinn, what you just said, but I think in a nutshell, it would be if you have a vowel, if you have two vowels within a syllable. Um, if you have vowels as the tone bearing unit, that you're going to have different results than if if the syllable is the tone bearing unit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, 
Okay. So, um, yeah, I think we have some good inspiration here. Uh, we want aspiration. Uh, what kind of constant size or inventory size do we want for our constants and our vowels? What do you think? Do you have an idea? Well, there is uh, a claim going out there in the tabological literature that more complexity of tone system correlates with larger inventories in general. Um, it's a bit, I think it's a bit hard to say for sure because there aren't that many um, independent examples of, of uh, tone systems that are not related to each other you know, in the same language family or, or growing up closely together. But, but there is that correlation out there in the literature that uh, maybe we can, we can either go along with or just buck the trend on. Yeah. What does the chat think? Yeah. Chat. What do you think? Let's, let's, what do you say? Do we want a a minimalistic uh, consonant inventory? Let's start with consonants, a minimalistic consonant inventory, or do we want a big, beautiful, uh, a big, beautiful consonant inventory? And then the same question regarding vowels, but we'll, we'll let you answer the constant one first. Yeah. Um, we are getting some requests in for lateral fricative. Mm, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Uh, okay. Love it. Lateral fricative. We're getting in a request for some front rounded vowels. That could be fun. Yeah. Oops. I put seven toys. Um, we we're getting people we're getting a lot of um a lot of responses saying minimalistic 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 inventories Mm. um but what what about what if we compromise and make the one of the two constant or vowel inventories minimalistic and the other one beautiful and uh yeah that's a good idea actually yeah so we have already done we've already done a minimalistic constant inventory a few times so why don't we do minimalistic vowel inventory and uh, a profusion of consonants. Mm-hmm. Sounds good to me. Okay, so let's let's say minimalistic vowels and lots of consonants. All right, so the last thing I think phonologically speaking um, will be to talk about syllable structure. Yes. And um, this is a case where there is some more, uh, there have been correlations pointed out in the in the typological literature about um, syllable structure complex syllable structure um, not being common not commonly occurring with tone systems so rather tone systems tend to occur with simpler syllable structures uh, typologically yeah. is uh, is that has that been your experience as well Quain? yeah I generally agree yeah like if we survey like uh, the east and south uh, southeastern Asian like tonal languages they are pretty like yeah uh so uh, they have pretty simple syllabic structures in general uh and african languages um yeah especially like southern african tonal languages they are um cvcv basically so yeah okay so then we're looking at something like a simple syllable structure with lots of consonants and a minimalistic vowel inventory now how we're going to fit front vowels front rounded vowels into a minimalistic vowel inventory (laughs) That's going to be interesting. Yeah. That's going to be an interesting challenge. Um, I think we have everything we need phonologically. Um, what about some inspiration, you know, morphosyntactically? What sort of language are we looking at here? Do we want something that's that's super analytic, um, like we have with the Sakrat languages, or do we want to do something different? Yeah, interesting question. Because typologically, like, it usually correlates with like as uh, an- more analytic um, in general, I would say. Yeah, but not necessarily the case. There are some like North uh, Central American tonal languages that have um, a lot of m- morphology. So yeah, I don't know. I kind of want to put a little bit of morphology. Yeah, into me this too. Language. So we you don't know, end up yeah. retreading the same road. So why don't we say um, our constraint will be not totally analytic. Okay. All right. I think we have enough, um, enough there. Uh, let's let's start making some charts. Okay. Um, okay. So let's get let's get some constants going. Ugh, I've made this hard. I'm gonna put the cut, put our inspiration over there, and now we have lots of room. So why don't we say consonants up here? Just oh. put, put a few. Just um, liquid. 
I just call it. Yeah. yeah. Great. And then we'll put something like, I don't know. How, how, did we say minimalistic? No, we said lots of constants. Okay. So we're going to have a lot of yeah. coronal places, I'm assuming, but let's yeah. just say, um, and beyond. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how many we're going to need back there. And we'll probably need at least two coronal places. Um, all right. So let's fit in what we've uh, what we've promised. Yeah. So far, um, we've promised a ladder uh, of fricatives. Think, right? uh, yeah. Which should technically, I guess, be their own uh, row, but uh, why not? Ladder of fricatives. I need to get my IPA chart open. Excuse me one second. Get that over here. Let me go to the full version. And feel free, Quain, to just plop in whatever you like. Oh, yeah. Um, I can allow some basics. Yes. And I think it would be cool to have a gap in our in our inventories. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to put the uh, aspirates in here. Yeah, the aspiration. Yeah. Mm, question. Do we want any sort of palatal stop or um, African, actually? I think it would be cool to have um, like some sort of a post alveolar affricate. Um, yeah. Exactly where we want that, I don't know. We could do, I mean, we could yeah. just, we could do a ch, like a ch and a ch. Uh, a ch and a ch. An yeah. aspirated, <laughs> yeah. An, yeah. <laughs> I realize that doesn't necessarily come through on audio. Um, <laughs> That's all okay. Right. So, a, a ch and a ch. Yeah. yeah. I, can, I can pronounce it with my native. Mandarin knowledge. Okay, so, so we can yeah. put it like here. One thing I'd like is a like a, a s huh, an aspirated s. Oh, that's spicy. Yeah, that's the one in Korea. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That would be kind of fun. S huh. We could huh. have we well, could have a pair. Uh, yeah. Really like uh contrasting s huh with s. Huh. That's kind of cruel, but I like it. S huh and s. Huh. Yeah. Cool. It depends. Or yeah, if if you have s, then just uh, don't have t, because those two are gonna be a disaster. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Could you write down the ones that you just said? Yeah, the t s t s h. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So no, no. Yeah. But yeah, no. So no, no t and t. And... Are we making these um, alveolar or dental? Mm. Either way, I have no preference, but yeah, huh. uh, maybe dental. Yeah. Dental. All right. So, t, t, n, s, s, s. Uh. <laughs> I, no. Yeah. No. It's a... Okay. Well, we did want a big, beautiful constant inventory, so we're yeah, getting it. We did. Um, okay. What else can we put in? I need to look at the chat. Oh. It's not yeah. nearly enough ah, screen okay. real estate. Um, okay. Yes. Aspiration. Ooh. Well. Oh, sorry, Quinn. You were going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was reading chat. And, okay. You're, uh, you're reading chat too. I was just seeing yeah. um, the comment from MZ. Uh, aspirated voiceless pre-nasalized contrast. Oh, that, yeah. That would be kind of fun. Yeah. That, isn't that something we did with a uh, group B historical challenge i think it i remember the prenasalized well, yeah yeah uh, we because we did have prenasalized stuff, yeah but. well we can put that in um let's see how do we want to notate that we can just do do it with a tie bar so we could do this as an example the, yeah um and then i can put i'll put together the rest um okay are you able to see quat uh qua okay chat queen <laughs> quatching oh, oh syllable is structure is real syllable yeah. structure I, is quat. real yeah quat <laughs> one of my um one of my questions in for my for my orals um in grad school was motivate the existence of syllable structure and uh -huh. if i were uh if i were a uh, a more cheeky 
person than I am, I would have just done a spoonerism like that. <laughs> yeah, but that, that was great. I, I enjoyed quad. <laughs> well, I think we should put that in as a word. Yeah. Oh, quad. Okay. Yeah. More like quad, like as, with aspiration. Yeah, quad. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got <laughs> Never a dull moment. Never a dull moment. Okay, so then, okay. and I think we should we should put in like the uh, yeah maybe and we can have a yeah a yeah and a wa yeah down here oh uh, yeah wa yeah um uh, okay do we want yeah. any other fricatives oh okay you're on the nasals yeah do you want it do you want a nasal at the velar place. Uh, I mean, yeah, <laughs> but like, uh, All right, I, I feel like Lina is very Asian sounding, like in general. Well, if we're going like, to have prenasalized nga, yeah. I, I don't but know if there's a typological we, implication. But, there, but. But, so that contrast is, unless we just like get rid of the nasals and have some like allophonic rules to Ooh. elaborate. Ooh, what if, what if the prenasalized stops and the nasals are in complementary distribution? Yes, that's yeah. exactly what I'm thinking about. Okay. So. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Let's do that. Um, let me put, I've lost, I've lost my IPA window. I've lost it. Oh no. Oh, I've lost it. All right. Um, okay. So then we're going to put these in and let's put in parentheses the prenasalized stops because I yeah. think it's more natural to analyze. I mean, it'll depend on the uh, precise yeah, patterns. Yeah, but they're, I think... they're more like complex phonetically. So yeah. That makes sense. And typologically rarer. So I'd... Yeah. Yeah. Without seeing the data, this would be my analysis. <laughs> it's always great to make an analysis without seeing the data, right? Yeah. Just be a linguist. Yep. You can do it too. So um, <laughs> if, we, if we want uh, quat to be a word, um, we either need we're making some decisions about syllable structure. Oh yeah. Because yeah, our first like official TM word is qua. So there's that. So let's let's write that down. So is now the question is do we want it to be true quat quat or do we want it to be a um like a a a, a labialized um uh, a labialized velar. Hmm. I feel like we've done that in protocol a bit yeah, recently. Yeah, so, so maybe this is evidence for our syllable structure, which is. Yeah, I uh, would say so. Yeah. Okay. So, which will mean that we'll be able to have these um, semi vowels in the onset position. Or at least we'll have branching onsets, we'll have complex onsets with, with a semi vowel like this. Unless you want to well, analyze yeah. the what as part of the nucleus. Well, wa is a bit of a stretch, is it? So, like, yeah, I would rather analyze it as kwa at rather than, like, two vowels. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, I think, yeah, I think it would be, I think it would be too much, too, too, too closely following, like, um, the Chinese linguistics yeah. tradition to, to do that. Yeah. So, okay, cool. So this is our first word. Uh, chat, what's this word going to mean? This is your mm. little assignment. Yeah. Um, so this tells us that we have at least C and then W, V, C, yeah. or at least T. Who knows if that, if there are other constants that can occur in these places, but at least those ones can. Okay, okay. So have quat be the name of the language. I think loud and clear, this is what we're, uh, okay. we're hearing. Okay, Just straight up agree. Yeah. Yeah. No Ch problem. Chat can get chaotic. This is true. I, maybe I'm, maybe we're at the point. Maybe we're, we're at the point, everyone, where I can't just say chat do this because then there's just too much. There's just too much. Um, wow. Who'd have thought? Six months ago, I was sitting sitting here with like three people in the chat. Everyone, thank you. <laughs> you guys are great. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, okay, so quat is the name of this language. 
and a right. good name it is. The best things happen by accident on this stream. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. Birai, for example. <laughs> Birai. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And I just like to give a shout out to to Birai, who uh, is a meme, who has become sentient on on the yeah. Discord. So, I, awesome. if yeah. I were wearing a hat, I would doff it right now. I, you know. It would be cool if I could start wearing hats to the stream because then I could do more of those doffings, but the headphones get in the way. It's a trouble. Uh, All right, let's take a look at vowels. I don't know if we're done with consonants yet. Um, what's our inventory size? Ooh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Not that big. That's not particularly, yeah, particularly large. I think we yeah. need a little bit more. Um, yeah. But I'm just going to... Uh, maybe, yeah, fricatives. Yeah, um, fricatives. Huh. Let's have a huh. And uh, what else? Mm. Uh, we could have a, a lateral affricate. Kla. Yeah, yeah. I saw somebody uh, suggesting that. Oh, okay, nice. Oh, yeah, Moon Truther. Yep, I see in the chat there. Kla. Credit where credit's due. Okay. Uh, so, do we want aspiration on that? Because that's going to be difficult, right? Yeah. <laughs> to distinguish. Oh, I mean, I'm. Ha we need to also start introducing some weird gaps. I think. Yeah. Maybe that's. So maybe one. just just tla, yeah, tla. or yeah, wh whatever, like yeah, tla. Maybe the the aspirated one because that's the one that's uh, sort of like easier to pronounce tla. in a way. Okay. So yeah, because little... uh, tla and tla, tla is probably like more to the English. <laughs> Anyone phonology. just. Anyone just listening to this is like, what on earth? Ah, ah. It's, you know, it's Tla yeah, versus Tla. Lucy can definitely put it into like intro. This is definitely like intro uh, worthy material. No shortage of that. All right. Um, okay. We're getting, ooh, vowel roticity distinction. I don't know how that will play in with, with tone. Hmm. Interesting. The yeah, we can explore that. If we want, uh, uh, I think we still need more. Yeah. Uh, so far, we don't have any voiced fricatives. But, That's true. Uh, but we don't have any voiced obstruents either, except for the, uh, I mean, stops either because of the, except for the prenasalized ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a gap that. Hmm, interesting. Seems more. Seems to make sense. Um, I'll just write post w right here. Um, anything far back in the mouth, farther beyond beyond the mm, velar? Beyond. Uh, well, stop maybe, because that's yeah. What I'm doing well, right now. Um, okay, so let's scoot that in a glottal stop. And what else? Um, oh. versus glottal fricative. Wait. Yeah, that makes sense. Especially if we have that? aspiration. The quote versus a uh, distinction, which, you know, some languages do, but most don't. The Just voiced like, versus voiceless? No, no, no. H versus a. Uh, uh, the H vela versus, versus glottal. Oh, yeah. Vela versus glottal. Yeah. I mean, there's no no shortage of languages that, that distinguish yeah, those. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Beyond okay. that, so we, anything we, else? Uh, uh, a gap, maybe. A no gap. Fa. Yeah. No, no, um, no labial or labial velar. Labial fricatives. Nothing. Or, yeah. Okay. Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Uh, we're. I think we're gonna have a hard time making this a bountiful constant inventory unless we introduce some secondary articulation. Yeah. We could do the Irish slash Russian special. Oh dear. Which is for those who are are, are not aware, is introducing um, contrastive palatalization for basically everything, uh, or velarization. Um, in the case of Irish, palatal or, palatalized or velar. Um, for all consonants, we could do that. Mm. I, I I I tell from your hesitation that you're maybe not especially enthusiastic <laughs> about that yeah i mean uh if you it depends on your analysis right if you analyze it as like because we have quat right mm -hmm. that 
that's our basis in a way. So mm -hmm. that's our guiding light. If, yeah. So if we have quat, we might have kya, and that's yeah. If you analyze it as like palatalization, like then why do you treat that specially, mm -hmm. but not quat, right? So. Right, and then what happens if you have palatalization with wa? Do you have quat? Yeah. Or do you yeah. do they coalesce yeah. into like cat or something like that? Yeah. And then we're just redoing Mandarin. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, so maybe not not palatalization, but maybe something. What else can we do? Yeah. What other secondary articulations can we can we give? Well, maybe some other places of. Um, wait, are, are there other places? Uh, we, um, can, wait. we can yeah. break up the coronal even more. Yeah. <laughs> and, um. well, yeah, because the palatal seems a bit empty, you know, mm -hmm. but yeah, if we were to like keep them separate, we should add something to either one. I could see this Ch, ch, having come from a palatal in a an earlier stage, yeah, because um, it's kind of somewhat uncommon for things to hang out in palatal for too long. I mean, yeah, it's not unheard of, but I think it's it's a bit of an unstable place of articulation. Yeah, but I mean, you know, like except every for, almost yeah, almost every single Chinese languages have ch and ch, which are like alveol palatal. Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, then we could do something like, hmm, we could do something like a palatal nasal. I think I saw that in the chat come up. Yeah, yeah. That's... Yeah, why don't we do that? And a palatal lateral. Oh, uh, yeah. Nya, nya. Yeah. Wait, nya, uh, nya, nya. Nya, nya, nya. Okay, I'm sold. <laughs> Let's uh, let me get the IPA chart open and I'll copy that over. Oh, hey, calls back. No, it's not your turn. Um, there we go. Yeah, it's very frustrating to copy and paste things in here. Uh, no, call on no. Yeah, there you go. All right, we're good. Okay. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, Oh, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah. What if we had um, a distinction between something that's not like super standard, but we had um, a phonological distinction between different types of sonorants, kind of like in, I'm going back to Irish here, but kind of like the, mm -hmm. the, the former, um, the sort of, oh, what are they called? Um, the ones that diphthongize vowels before them when they're in co a coda position in in some oh. varieties of Irish, or lengthen vowels before them, but that's the only other um, that's the only other that's the only effect they have. Otherwise, they they show up um, phonetically the yeah, same. Are as, they different like phonemes though? Well, that's kind of the yeah. <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah. What about a what about a, a ra or a ra? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can have that. Okay. So, which one, yes. trill or tap? Mm. Or either, anything goes. I mean, anything it is erotic. Goes. Yeah, basically. Okay, so we have twenty-four, I think here. Um, that's, I think, on the lower end of of big, but yeah. We we should probably put in a little cut here for YouTube. I think let people go. Yeah, and, uh, we get can there. add on like when yeah as we go. As we go, okay. So that I will go back to the full screen. Say to YouTube uh, a big thank you for joining us. Um, Quain, anything to say to YouTube before we sign off? Oh, bye YouTube. All right, we will see you next time.